when would be the best time to add therapy to your toolkit? And what kind of a therapist should you be looking for? Wow, that is kind of a big question. Because <laughs> there's so many different times that therapy can be really helpful. So I think I'll start with your second question, which is what kind of a therapist should you be looking for? Um, I think with AlphaGal, it's important to find um, a therapist that is AlphaGal knowledgeable, that understands AlphaGal, or that understands food allergies in general. Um, and then they could learn more specifically about the differences, you know, between AlphaGal and food allergies and how the presentation is a little different and um, they could learn that. And then if that's not a possibility, then um, seeing someone who has experience with just health issues and the psychosocial impact of health issues would be a great place to start too. Um, and then when do you know that you need a therapist? Well, so I think that people can really benefit from therapy at all different stages of this AlphaGal journey. Um, there are people who will get the diagnosis and just want to touch base with some things that may be challenging in their journey and just get to be knowledgeable about what some of the stumbling blocks might be psychologically right on the front end of the diagnosis. And then there's all different kinds of things to watch for with food allergies and alpha-gal syndrome in general, psychologically, that would indicate that a therapist could be helpful. Um, some of those things are you're finding it difficult to concentrate on everyday things because you're worried about um, accidental exposure. It could be you're having trouble sleeping, you're restricting food, you're losing weight, you are, I, let me clarify that you're restricting food that you and your doctor have deemed to be safe food, um, that your world is in general getting smaller instead of staying the same, that you're finding it really difficult to leave the house for fear of having a reaction, that um, you just need some general support because this is really, really hard stuff. Um, you need to find some different ways to get out of that avoidance that I was talking about earlier at the very beginning of avoidance of your feelings. Um, you're noticing a lot of self-judgment and a lot of negative self-talk. Um, another reason might be that you really do not have a solid support system and you need to, um, be able to process the difficulty of having this with someone else and you're not getting that support from your family or friends. Um, of course, if you were having any type of suicidal ideations or any type of thoughts of hurting yourself or other people, you would definitely want to reach out um, to 911 even in some instances or a therapist or um, a suicide hotline, something like that. Um, but really there's just a lot of ways that therapy can make this much more manageable on all the different levels. But I do think to reiterate, I think that someone that's familiar with AGS is really good because they understand uh, right up front the different stressors that you're dealing with. personal experience, I already had a therapist when I was diagnosed with Alpha-Gal syndrome. So for me, having that therapist already on board, and that isn't relevant for a lot of these people who are looking for one now that, now that they've been diagnosed, but having that therapist on board was so awesome because she learned it along with me. And then when I did face issues or feelings of isolation or depression or anxiety or any of these other things that accompanies Alpha-Gal syndrome, she was able to walk me through that because we already had this rapport. We already had this relationship. And so um, even though it's maybe not quite as relevant for people who already have a diagnosis and are looking for someone to help with that, maybe that applies to some people who don't, aren't having those feelings yet, but it's nice to start talking with someone about them, you know, get a therapist in your wheelhouse, in your, in your support system 
so that when those things do come up, they're there to help guide you in a professional way. Yeah. And I think that's great. I think my, my story was a little bit different than Debbie's. I had seen a therapist off and on for years and it's funny now because she actually was diagnosed with alpha gal syndrome and then she retired, (laughs) but she was one of the first people that I had heard about, um, being diagnosed with it, um, years ago. And, but through my anaphylactic reactions, which were very traumatic for me, they brought forward a lot of PTSD about a year later. And it, you know, it really caused me to start to dig a little bit deeper and look into different modalities. Um, and EMDR therapy was actually one of those. So, um, you know, I think it's, I think all of this is just so valuable to everyone in this community, no matter where they are at the beginning of their walk with this or the middle, or they've been dealing with it for 10 plus years. Um, I think Debbie and I both are just huge, huge advocates for taking that step, because if you can foundationally set yourself up for, you know, I don't know. I feel like it sets you up for success. If you can work on your mindset and work on that deeper part of yourself. Um, so I think it's a great thing to address. Yeah. And you're exactly right. I can't believe I forgot about the, or didn't mention, I didn't forget about it, but didn't (laughs) mention the trauma piece of this, because that is a very important piece that can really be helped with therapy. Well, and it's interesting because I don't think the average person, at least for me, I didn't think about going through an anaphylactic event as being trauma. You know, I think maybe we have a different perception of trauma in a lot of ways. And it wasn't until, you know, I went through that initial onset episode where I was woken up to seeing double in the room spinning. And I was having a really hard time sleeping at night for over a year because I was scared to go to sleep because I didn't want to feel that feeling again. And it wasn't until my husband and children really went back to their schedules full time that I realized I was having a lot of anxiety about being by myself. And I had, you know, Debbie to call and I had a support system in place, but it, it didn't dawn on me until I got to that point that what I was dealing with was trauma and it was from that event. So I think it's important to encourage people to not dismiss their trauma, right? Because trauma shows up different for everyone. Absolutely. A hundred percent. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you for addressing that and going into more detail.